Danny, thank you for making the time. Um, very much appreciate you doing this. I know sometimes this is also out of comfort level for a lot of the agents we talk to because this, you know, it goes in front of a lot of people sometimes. Uh, but I always like to start out the same way. Let's let's find out who you are. You know, to anyone watching, what, where are you? How long have you been in real estate for? Give us, the, you know, your background in the industry. All right. Uh, started with Keller Williams uh, approximately ten years ago. Uh, I live in Grayson, Georgia, which is a suburb of East Atlanta. Uh, my wife and I have uh, adopted four children. All the youngest oh. is about to turn twenty-one uh, this year. That's awesome. So, that's that's great. Um, transaction wise last year i did 35 transactions i am a solo agent okay. uh, i do use a transaction coordinator when needed and my wife assists me with all the proofing and things like that ah uh, and are you are you still with kw or have you oh yeah oh yeah yeah no and you're strong no, look at that no, no reason to leave no reason okay the thing, the thing that i love about kw their vision values match mine god family business when we started in uh standard we actually somewhat i don't want to say copied but copied the slogan because god first family second business yeah. third really resonated um I'm, I'm a christian and 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 i've i've always thought that that was the coolest slogan and i never actually knew it until i started talking to so many kw agents and for that um i think that out of the first when we started probably 20 agents the first 20 agents we ever brought on i think 12 of them were with kw it, right. we kind of attracted them so i i think they're a great brokerage um okay and so let's let's break break this down you've started with us um almost two months ago to the day correct right, right. and a couple of just key questions on you know like return on investment so number one is how much ad spend are we running every month um, I'm doing $300 currently. Okay. So um, we're $600 in probably right by this point. I'll, I'll and, guess. and then this is, this is the number side of everything, right? This is the, it's like the, to anyone watching that's, you know, thinking about coming on, this is what to expect kind of thing. Uh, so from $600 and how many leads have we gotten now? Uh, how many leads? Yeah. Uh, straight up leads. Hey, the look, gas that's, that's in the engine. Help me with that. 130. 130. 130. Right. Cool. And then out of the 130 that we've created, how many appointments have we actually converted? I believe six. Okay. And then out of those six appointments, talk to me about what we're seeing. Uh, one, I have literally under contract. We're closing next month. Uh, she okay. originally came in at 200. It's going to wind up being a $250,000 closing. Ooh, uh, very I've, good. Got, I've got a cash buyer, 400,000 that I'm trying to find new construction with a basement and a ranch. And I don't know what the market is everywhere, but Tight right now. it's a unicorn. I will find that. And then one other person that is getting pre-approved. So okay. as far as nothing, there's no ROI yet, but uh, my on the books, I'm scheduled to close next month and then it'll be a two to one ROI. These other people will easily be a five to one. Uh, that's awesome. Probably our forecast within two months. That's awesome. Yeah, um, it really, it is the best <laughs> investment that I've made in any any kind of silver bullet out there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, uh, on that, I I don't want you to drop any names of any any past companies you might have worked with, but I'm sure you've probably worked with other companies in this space doing this same kind of thing before. Am I right? Yep. <laughs> I, yeah. And I don't want to drop any names either. And, yeah. Uh, but what if you could for me, talk to me about working with us. What's been different about our process than, than anyone else that you might have worked with in the past? It is. Well, first off, it is exactly what you told to say. You know, um, uh, that, that was really real to me. Uh, the training is very good. I've not finished the training yet, um, but the one that I did, especially the, the, the training that you get that you can take away from this, the KP, KPIs, the KPIs, I'll be bluntly honest. I've not got it yet. I've, I'm still not counting. <laughs> I know that, that my business will increase if I do that. My maps coach tells me you need to track your numbers exactly yeah. like that 
but the thing that I've enjoyed is the training. Also, um, I don't know what Kayla is in the whole picture of things, but anytime I have a question, I can hop on the app, ask her a question. If she doesn't respond almost immediately, um, she will. And also, if she doesn't know the answer, that's the key part. If she doesn't know the answer, she's not afraid to say, let me find out. I love that. Yeah, I mean, seriously, uh, she she's great. She's great. Uh, the other the other thing is the pipeline. I again, I fail. I need to know more about the pipeline. So, uh, as a matter of fact, I was speaking with her. I've got a bunch of dead leads. I'm going to send them into this pipeline and let the AI take care of them. Cool. I don't have to worry about it. I love that, man. I, and one thing that uh, that you said that I think is my uh, being one of the co-founders of the company, I think my bit, my best pride point is actually that just the team we have here, you know, finding people like Kayla over here. It's not easy, <laughs> um, especially today when, um, you know, some, uh, especially today, it's not easy to find good talent sometimes. So um, I, I love that. What, when you, you know, were first looking at coming on with us, what made you decide that we were someone who you might want to partner with? I think it was every question that I had was answered honestly, and it came through. I was a little wary about the uh, Google, uh, the Facebook leads, because I played with Facebook leads before. But the way the AI handles them is it, there could be improvements, but I mean, better or not, it's great. You know, uh, I the other company I've worked with that had an AI is not anywhere near it. That's when we'll get those leads, those Facebook leads, and put them out there. <laughs> I uh, one thing one thing to note is that Ter Terrence, the other the other co-founder of the company, and I, we are always working on product as well. And so I know a lot of companies out there they kind of come up with a solution and then that's it. They don't really care about progressing it further. But and you can ask Kayla this. I am very adamant about making sure that we're always progressing every single part of what we do because there's it's never perfect. Just like you said, there's always improvements to be made. So I love that. Um, Okie dokie. I mean, for me, this is this, this is just a fun one. You know, you're an agent that's been in for for two months. You've been in real estate for a long time, ten years. So you're experienced. You know this industry really well. What do you think? I guess here's here's my my best question. Out of the six appointments you've gotten, you've really converted, you know, 50% of them for the most part, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. So what are you doing on your end to have those results? Because that is a really good conversion rate. One of the things that I've done the past two years is when someone else sets an appointment for me, I go in by saying, hey, my assistant set this appointment because that gives the fact that I have an assistant and that I'm on. Put you on a pedestal, if you will. Yeah, exactly. My assistant's at this point before me. How can I help you? I come asking questions. And uh, from those, then I'll lead them down to help find them the solution. The one that's under contract now, her lease expired. Uh, she's supposed to renew her lease in September. She had to find a home. A buyer had to find a home in a 250 market. And we got it under contract. Uh, so talk to me about when you take the appointment. I love that for you. you, it, you it's that kind of authority that comes with saying my assistant, right? Mm -hmm. Are you, what, what are you doing to win these, to win these prospects? Because right now the market, especially where you are, it's so competitive, right? Every, every prospect's probably talking to multiple agents um, at any given time. So what are you doing that's making them decide, let me, let me work with this guy? Right. Um, my wife is a broker but she is not an active real estate. She reads contracts for compliance purposes all day. That's her job. So she's showing me what is winning. What is the, because it's a contract when she gets it. So yeah. she can say, hey, they're doing this now. They're doing an escalation clause is no longer the big thing to do. Now you need to come to money over the appraised price. So she'll keep me informed on that. And I break it down for the buyers because most buyers- There it is, got it. Yeah, most of the buyers don't understand. What do you mean I got to bring money above the appraisal? Yeah, I can't phrase it like that. 
uh, I, I just have a great buyer's consultation with them. Now, most of them are over the phone. Um, uh, COVID was still pretty, you know, active whenever I was there. Um, I've tried to do the Zoom uh, with a few of them, but uh, most of them are over the phone, first meeting, that type thing. Okay. And so I think the key word that you said is you consultation, right? Yeah. I, like, I can't tell you how many times um, I have agents that come to us and they're like, Hey, I'm not converting the appointments as effectively as some other agents, like what's up. And we'll look at their process. And the first thing they do when they get an appointment, something we say in six of eight not to do, but they send them to a lender right away before they even give any value to them. Uh, uh -huh. and yeah. And I think I've preached this in almost every single success interview case study that we've done, but I, I, I love that selfless Per, like mindset of let me give value to receive value instead of the whole, let me see, like, let's just make sure this is worth my time kind of perspective that so many agents have right now. Yeah. Um, okay. I love that. And so to any agents that are working with us that aren't seeing the same results that you're seeing, what would be one or two actionable steps that you would tell them like, Hey, this is, this is what's working well for me. Watch the entire training. I still have a couple of hours yeah. of it use the kpa i still haven't done that track your numbers you really I, the numbers numbers are real estate yeah. um you can't have kayla uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and just respond i mean keep the appointments keep the i've not I, I i've never been late for an appointment because when the they put it on my calendar they notify me that it's been set and then I look and make sure that I'm there. I, I spread out 30 minutes before the appointment to make sure I'm in the groove and I've done some script practice about what's coming up because oh, I, I love get, that. You actually rehearsed before the appointment for the appointment. Yeah. Yeah, because I get, I get the most of the time on the leads, I get the basic information. They're looking in Alpharetta, $400,000 budget, not pre-approved or something like that. So at least I've got an idea of how to get a conversation started. And then I say, why, why is Alpharetta important to you? Or why do you need to move in six months instead of now? And lead them down that line just continue Create your urgency and you find out the meaning behind what they're actually trying to do and then you can use that as the anchor point you will not necessarily create a sense of urgency i find out where they are and i go to there if okay. they're not ready if they don't have good credit that's perfectly fine i put i put them in uh, a, a, another database <laughs> and put them on a 36 touch because i want to stay in touch with them I don't necessarily send them to a lender because if they ask me, well, how do I get my credit up? How do I do this? Talk to my lender. I don't say apply to the lender. The lenders I work with, they will give free advice to anyone. As a matter of fact, my eldest daughter, who's 23, bought a condo last year. She talked to Lori, one of my lenders, three years ago. And she said, okay, you want to own your own home? Dit, 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 dit. And she did dit, 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 dit. She bought a home. <laughs> That's awesome. So you you really, and it, it might be, it's because of your experience, you do look at it as a long-term process too, not just that short-term immediate gratification. The first six years of my career, I was looking for right now business. Now it's a more nurturing process, both for buyers and sellers. Okay. And then, and talk to me about, cause we have a lot of agents that will come on in their second, third, fourth year of real estate. And so you just said in the first six years, you were looking for the right now business. Is there anything you would say to the agents that are working with us that are in their second, third or fourth year? You, unfortunately, most agents are independent contractors. They do need right now business to feed their family. Okay. Uh, so I wouldn't necessarily give off from that, but learn to nurture the ones that aren't right now. Okay. Because if you still are going to be in business next year, you got to nurture those people, you know, so yeah. don't necessarily focus on that. You do have to invest in some lead follow up. The way that I've always thought about it is, and I think I actually have a YouTube video on this day nurture channel about this, you know, you're always going to get statistically those immediate gratification deals based off the volume that you have coming in. So if you have 100 or 200 leads coming in, there's a statistical amount that should close, you know, very, very quickly, right. just, just based off the NAR stats and, and, and how this industry works. But a lot of agents stop there and they never really squeeze the juice out of what they're doing. 
And so that's kind of what, what we focus on. It's how do we how do we convert it higher amounts than the national average by doing that kind of follow up process. And I think you're a really good um, role model as to that. You know, because really no, you disagree. <laughs> I, I'm learning. Like I said, I was six years in in doing that, and now I'm trying to perfect it. The key is to stay in touch, offer <laughs> value, offer value, find out what they need, and supply it. Like I say, I'm a single agent, but I got a big team. If I got a lawyer question, call Gene. He'll, he'll be glad to give you this information, no charge. If I got a loan question, call one of these people. They'll talk to you. You know, if I, I have an inspection question, I have inspectors, yeah, have them give me a call. Um, I have a mold guy that I personally had mold in my home. And he said, oh, you don't need me to do this. <laughs> You know, just long term, really just solid yeah. relationships. Yeah, nurturing those relationships. I love that, and and so that that was your actionable for people that are working with us. What's your your advice being inside the program to to any agents that are thinking about coming on with us? It's uh, oh, any agents. Uh, it's like I say, the best silver bullet I've gotten so far because I know agents love silver bullets. It's not easy. You got to do the work once you get the leads, but it's thank funny. you for saying that. Yeah, and, you got no, I appreciate that. Well, and, and break that down because I, I can't tell you one of one of my biggest pet peeves personally is when we have agents come in and they're just waiting to be spoon fed. And to any agent watching this that hasn't started with us, it's not a spoon feeding process. It's never how business works, no matter what industry you're in, whether it's real estate or any other, you always have to work for it. So talk to me about what you're doing on top of what we're doing to make sure that you're seeing, you know, talk to me about the work. Like what's that look like? Um, the work, well, basically be there for the appointments. Uh, you, you really need to be there for the appointments. Um, you, you had mentioned something about the leads. Uh, I listened to a, another agent, a uh, top agent, and he was saying, you know, if, if you realize you can't service this lead for whatever reason, they they uh, the the area they're looking at the price point they're looking at let them go you know don't don't try to get them to someone else because he said i'm tired of agents saying the lead uh is uh stonewalling me i haven't heard from them in three days you got to remember that you're not their number one priority they can have a life to lead I mean, when I do send someone to a lender, you know, if they don't apply right away, I used to say, you know, what happened? Where'd you go? What are you going to do? Don't you want to help? But then I realized they've got a life to lead. Give them some time. Don't take them out. If they're, you know, if they're ready, just keep in, again, keep in contact, asking questions. I think, and I think to reaffirm that point to any point, anyone watching this video, think about some tasks that you need to do. Oh, that are, and, and how long you like, not, not in relation to a state nurture, but in general, think about any tasks that people have to do and how long sometimes you end up putting it off until you actually get like the example given, I'll just, I had, I, I needed swimming, swimming suits for this summer. Right. And I hate, I hate buying clothing. I never buy clothing. It's like, like I'm, I'm super simple. I always, I have two types of t-shirts, one for casual one time, one for working out and super, super simple. Right. I don't like shopping. And Savannah was constantly on me saying, you got to go, you got to get your stuff. You got to get your stuff. And it took me probably three or four weeks, like missed, missed, um, boating chances and everything. Cause I didn't have swimming suits to finally be like, okay, let me finally, let me finally do it. And that's for something that was like, like super, super easy, but you know, going to a lender and doing this massive thing that, you know, it, it's only, it, it only makes sense sometimes that people take their time in actually getting it done. Right. Um, and so I think that your point right there is huge because I think so many newer agents forget that these leads are people living their own lives. They're not just leads that are, you know, money sources for that agent. Yeah. Right. And one of the tasks, I don't know, each agent's different as far as the tasks that they can do to get success. I do think a lot of agents focus too much on their website, on the design of the postcard they're going to be sending out, on you know the font of their. They focus too much on that. You know the postcard's going to be thrown in the trash as soon as it comes in. Don't worry about it. Just get it in their hands. 
imperfect action, just like we were talking about right before, right, right before this. Imperfect action. To anyone that doesn't know, there's actually going to be a video on imperfect action in 6FA 2.0, ironically enough. Um, but it's funny that you talk about the website and such because, I mean, for the longest time, I think for the first year of business, Sustained Nurture did not have a website. It was actually longer than that. And people were always like, you know, well, where's your website? And it's, it's kind of like what you said, it's realistically, it's never something that actually we needed to drive our needle forward in business. You know, and so many agents get in this mindset of doing all the small things that aren't business right. growth, but just kind of like, like you said, end up in the trash. And so I, I think that's one of my, to anyone watching this, whether you're with us or whether you're not with us, I think what you just said is probably the biggest piece of business advice I give any business owner, which is always make sure that you're doing the things that drive your business forward, not worrying about the fonts that are on your business cards. You know? And the only way you can track that is to track your numbers. Yeah. And so that KPI sheet, I've been wanting to say this, that KPI sheet that we brought on is exactly what we used for, um, for the first year and a half at Estate Nurture. Uh, and then when we, we we ended up getting to a size where we outgrew it a little bit, but um, I, 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 this is a weird, if you're, if anyone watching this has a skill in building out Google sheets, it's actually a very lucrative skill because we paid a lot of money to get that, to get that Google sheet built out. Cause there's a lot of different little automations and triggers in there. Um, so please any agents, including yourself use it because it is really, really good. And it shows you all the little things it, it takes, it takes away emotion and makes your business completely logical. And it's the only way that I've ever thought you can effectively grow a business. So right. Um, Danny, I appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Uh, last question is, if an agent ever watches this and wanted to reach out to you, is it okay? It's okay to say no. Please, please yeah. My telephone number is 404-771-8629. You heard it from the man himself. Wow. 771-8629. <laughs> Danny, I... And you can Google me and I'll probably come up sort of toward the top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate your time Danny thank you so much if you guys are watching this have any questions for him you you heard where you can get in contact otherwise you know where we are at Stay Nurture um, thank you and we're, we're going to kill the recording now